hello and welcome to the show. I have some more Forza Horizon 4 footage for you today and to talk about some of the kind of finer details of the game that I noticed while playing. First of all, we're going to start, and this is one of the opening sequence races essentially, it kind of goes through all the different weather and shows you all the different vehicles, all sort of different sorts of vehicles, etc. And one thing that immediately struck me is these big off-road trophy trucks. Now, the Super Stadium trucks, in reality, if you've ever seen them race, they are mad machines. When they go around corners, they pick their front wheel up massively, massively high in the air, and it's something we've never been able to get the vehicles to do on Forza, whether it be Horizon or whether it be on Motorsport. The good news is it looks like they will do it a bit more on here. So watch the truck ahead of me as we come up towards this next corner. And you kind of notice it a little bit from on board as well. Notice how far the front wheel is actually off of the ground. And when the trucks have got the wheel off of the ground, they aren't completely and utterly uncontrollable. So I mean, that's what it looks like. I didn't get much time. This was the only race that I got to drive with these trucks. And we went to third person to try and have a look. It turns out it's very difficult to take the vehicle around the corner and <laughs> spin the camera around. It certainly feels like the truck is getting up on its side. And maybe with a little bit of tuning, a little bit of suspension tweaking, uh, you'll be able to get the vehicle to to do well, maybe not quite the, as ludicrous as extreme as you got from the Super Stadium truck. Admittedly though, these are also aren't the Super Stadium trucks. They are different sort of off-road racing vehicles, so you might not expect them to do as much. It might be possible though to get them to handle, get them to look as spectacular as you were going for, while still actually being, you know, vaguely drivable. You could kind of get the trucks to do it, but they'd be a complete mess and <laughs> not be able to handle. So that was something, I mean, again, very, very pretty in all of the snow, but the actual handling of the trucks, that was something that was uh, very, very intriguing to me. Now, as far as new parts go for the vehicles, well, I only had a couple of vehicles that I could ever uh, look at. Uh, there is the new track width that you can set for the vehicles, so uh, it's not on every single vehicle, but a fair number of them, I believe, will have it. The most noticeable new part that I came across is a new compound of tyres that we have got available. The vintage race tyres, they're all of your normal ones. Uh, much like we so see, you've got the, the Horizon Race and the Normal Race tyres don't make any difference, it's just a sidewall. These are actually a different level of grip. They're a different, you know, they give you a different sort of PI. Uh, they are a very different level of grip. They're better than standard tyres, uh, but they're not as good as sort of most of the, the, sort of the more modern tyres. There are also full-on drag slicks, your off-road tyres, as expected. Uh, but it's an interesting thing to have, and I hope it's something we see more of in, in Forza Games Hell, even going forward, having specific special... Um, vintage racing tyres, because, you know, after all, the, the, the tyres that would have been what raced on cars in the 60s dynamics. and 70s are very different to a full modern-day slick tyre. As far as kind of aero parts, as far as whatever, the Charger's not the best car to, to show this on this, or the, the beginner car that I picked. Naturally, it's orange, it's a muscle car. Uh, so there isn't perhaps a huge amount of bodywork, but nothing massively different. Engine swaps, I mean, these are the ones that you would perhaps expect to see from previous Forza games, 6.5 litre V12, uh, the V8, the, the uh, Mustang, I think, supercharged uh, V8, the Viper V10, and the 6.2 litre uh, V8. However, there are some contextual engines for sort of special vehicles, and again, I haven't tested all of them, so I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but I had to go with the Unimog, uh, well, I haven't got it filmed, wasn't to film it. That has got two engine swaps. It's got, a, I think it's one of those, it's a two and a half thousand horsepower uh, monster of an engine. I think it's also got the racing truck engine as an option. So things like the peel, things like uh, the tax, maybe they'll have some interesting, unusual, slightly different engines uh, for those cars. It's nice to see, it's nice to see some slightly, <laughs> I mean, I'd love to be able to put a big V12 in a peel. I think that's not going to work at the end of the day, but the upgraded motorbike engine that we saw in Horizon 3, and who knows what else we might see. So, yeah, there are some contextual engine upgrades. The rest of it is kind of as as you would expect. Again, if you played a Forza game before, you played Horizon 3, you played one of the motorsport games before, it's going to feel it's gonna feel familiar. Uh, there are similar, similar parts in terms of tuning as well. Tuning options are pretty much the same as you get in Forza 7. Of course, you can do the, the drifty suspension with the steering lock and all of that. But uh, as far as I could tell and as far as I played through, there was nothing uh, vastly different, nothing massively new, as I said, outside from a few uh, potentially interesting contextual engines and a new new compound of tyre. So it was off to a race to go and have a look at some at some driving. Now, in these first races, I don't know what it's like further down the line. Uh, depending on what car you turned up, the game would just sort of set up the race to be something vaguely comparative. Rather than the whole blueprint system, this was just set up the race compared with what you're growing. If I took the Charger to an off-road event, I'd be racing muscle cars off-road, which is, you know, pretty good fun. Uh, also, 
There is a uh, streamer mode uh, which you can. T uh, I actually did have it on. I was having issues with the radio, not wanting to turn off. But uh, there is actually a streamer mode on this game, which is really cool. I'm seeing it more and more turn up in games, which is brilliant. Uh, you can turn it on, and it should theoretically uh, stop all the copyright music. But uh, <laughs> there we go. Now, racing. I mean, handling, handling physics-wise, this is another one. If you've played a uh, Forza game in the past, you know what to expect. It is a little bit different to a little bit different to Horizon 3. I like the way the cars drive. You know, it's a little bit more arcadey than... I say a little bit more arcadey than, than Motorsport 7, but it is a very, very solid, good, fun handling model. I try to squeeze my way up the inside of a Corvette. Just about, just about make it, uh, make it stick. One of the perhaps bigger criticisms of Horizon 3, certainly one of the bigger issues when it came to, to races is pretty much you wanted to win, you made the car all-wheel drive and you put a horrendous amount of power in it. Now that's not something that I could have tested as such so far in as far as we couldn't really modify the... I didn't really get to the point where I could massively modify the cars and, and really compare it to to other vehicles to see if that was that was still the case. I will say the uh, the roads were certainly I did race around work, were a fair bit technical and if you got things a little bit uh, wrong with the cars, if you were a little bit too mad with your power, potentially you would come up you would come up to issues, although that's yeah, not going to be not something I could I could test. So it might still be the case that you're going to want a uh, a mad a mad amount of power. I mean, we will find that one out uh, <laughs> over time. Racing against the AIs, well, they were interesting. Naturally, the first thing I did was go and put the AI on as tougher a difficulty as I could. This is yeah, racing up against things, unbeatable. It's cool, and well, the, the AI at the front of this one actually managed to escape away. Got a pretty good, got a, got a pretty good break away. I think there was the AI were busy going three wide, and I had to kind of check up and avoid them. Not much that, that I could do about chasing down this vehicle ahead. Ultimately, this is not a game where you have to win every single race to progress, and I like that. I like that in a game where it's not forcing you to constantly. Re Start a race so that you can, you know, progress to the next one. So you get a second place. Now that's kind of what goes on in in terms of in terms of motorsport. Uh, you have these little uh, like end screens, I guess, like the, the emotes that you unlock for your character and so on. You can use in that. You get your money. You get your uh, XP or influence rewards, as it's uh, as it's called on it. You know, fans XP, whatever you want to call it. Uh, same thing. I'll go into a little bit more depth looking at the career mode in a in a later in a later video. The AI are not the most derpy AI that I have come against. You saw that they had their little bit of a three-wide uh, peculiar, <laughs> peculiar moment, as they often, as they often sometimes do. But I had some fairly decent enough racing with them. You know, they could put up a fight. If I got to the front, if I got to the front, you could kind of run away a little bit. And you know, if you want to play bumper cars and push your way through the AIs, well, funnily enough, that's going to be fairly straightforward. But uh, if you do want to race cleanly with the AIs, for the most part, they will tend to fair, they'll tend to drive fairly nicely around you. I mean, it's it is an incredibly, incredibly pretty game. This it is a incredible. Like it's <laughs> just some of the views. Yes, it is very quaint British uh, countryside, country houses, and so on that you go around, but. Damn, it is it is a very very pretty. I mean, this is another one of the I think one of the smaller towns, smaller sort of hamlets that uh, that we're coming up to. Uh, I'm coming up to it very sideways in a Dodge Charge. I'm not sure this particular area would be so keen about said uh, <laughs> Dodge Charger turning up kind of sideways into their sleepy sleepy little village. But either way, yeah, the AIs. So far from what I raced against, I mean, you can still build your car. You could, you know, you could probably exploit building your cars if you want to have a very easy time up against the AI vehicles, if you so wished. If you, I mean, yeah, these are sort of pre-built cars. I don't know what they'll do in terms of building the AI. So if, for example, I go off and build a Charger to B-Class, let's say, I don't know if I then turn up to the race, I presume the AI will build their muscle cars to a similar category. Now, I might be able to build mine far, far better than the AIs, naturally. But in this particular uh, configuration, I mean, the fact that this car is sort of just a mid-random PI, there's no homologation classes as far as I can tell or as far as I saw. It's just you know, a mid-random tier PI car, and this has found some vehicles to go and race with, and you know, vehicles that were fairly, fairly comparative. This particular race that uh, we have going on is tackling a slightly more technical, slightly more technical a road as you can see as it's wiggling its way up into the 
into the hills. And we might find, I said, kind of driving road, a good sort of driving road as we weave our way through this uh, fairly, I'd say fairly, fairly narrow kind of town. There's, oh, Hamlet again, really. Uh, there are some quite wide footpaths around the place. Then we head up in towards this uh, technical twisty part. If there are plenty of races with this kind of uh, cornering, these kind of turns, the ultra power vehicles may come a little bit unstuck. I mean, this is where I'm having a fight with the AI. I'm trying to go around the outside of a Firebird try to stick. Can't quite, can't quite do it. That was my bad. I turned it into the red corner of the car with three wide with a... Is it Camaro or Vega? Well, on the left, either way, it uh, couldn't quite match the power of the Charger. I mean, this is a sort of excellent little little race, an excellent little road to uh, test out the cars. Plenty of technicality as we run up in towards the forest. And now it's, I have got to the front around here. My Charger was uh, working pretty well. There isn't... I mean, Horizon's never really had that sort of catch-up and whatnot for the AIs. And yeah, if you can get that little bit clear, they're not going to suddenly uh, row band their way up towards the back of you. But you get the idea of a more technical stage here, a more technical route. And as I said with the previous video, if there are plenty more of these, I will be I will be plenty happy. I like to see. Well, it's, you know, not narrow, narrow confines through here. The actual road is still pretty demanding for a big. We do have a bit of a straight line run to the finish. But, uh, yeah. So, race against the AIs, pretty pretty solid, pretty fun. Uh, they put up, an, they put up a, a decent challenge. And that was, yeah, another another victory for... It was a Camaro, my bad. Uh, <laughs> the back of it looked a bit funny. Maybe it's a different bump. Anyway, the final thing that I wanted to do in this was have a look at some slightly different off-road terrain. Because there was... I'd seen in sort of trailer footage I've seen in, in various bits of video, some very, very muddy roads. And I was curious to find out, and I spent actually quite a long time looking for one, how those differed in terms of surface, how they differed in terms of grip to a normal dirt path. There are plenty of dirt paths. And as you go through the seasons, what were dirt paths will become kind of muddy, well, not muddy, but they will be kind of sort of soggy dirt paths. You'd have lots of puddles to worry about uh, and so on. But you're actually trying to find a full-on mud path was proving a little bit difficult, of course. I don't really know where I was going around here. It was actually as I was driving around in the Lancia, heading off towards an event, that I finally, finally spotted the bit of terrain, the area that I was looking to go. This was actually wandering off towards a forest, or kind of through a, through a forest, a sort of spooky forest we can uh, wander into, and finally sort of found this uh, muddier dirt track. In terms of the the handling for the car, yet yeah, this sort of terrain feels certainly different driving down here. I didn't get to have extensive tests, of course, but uh, this definitely felt a, or this this actual route here is a really rather interesting, uh, really interesting little bit of uh, forest to drive through. And yeah, there there is that that surface difference between a pure pure gravel road and uh, wandering down here. I'd like to test it more, and I'm sure I will once I get uh, once I get my hands on the full game. So yeah, there is going to be difference in terms of the surfaces between driving on a dirt road in summer, for example, and driving on a dirt work road in spring when there is the, the, the you know it's, it's wet. It's You've got to deal with puddles. Puddles are something you're going to have to deal with in terms of finding sort of fast lines through the course. I, I did, when I drove it in summer, I was driving a Lancia. When I drove it in spring, I was, oh no, sorry, I was driving it in autumn, I think, actually, come to think of it. Uh, I was driving it in Charger. So there's going to be naturally some, some car differences, a little bit difficult to, to ju just the way things happened, happened to go. Uh, yeah, certainly dealing with the puddles on a racetrack when you're going for that, uh, that ultimate fastest lap time, etc., is something you're going to have to to contend with. The surface grip I mean, it felt different, but it was hard to judge depending on, because well, I just did two very, very different cars. The Chargers are always going to struggle more, funnily enough. But again, as I said with the AI picking of cars, I turned up to an off-road event. I was in the Charger. I was expecting it to say, do you want to go drive a Lancia? It didn't give me said option. It just plonked me in the race with the Charger and gave the AIs all equal muscle cars or equally similar muscle cars. So it was kind of good fun slipping and sliding around in the muddy water with the <laughs> series of muscle cars. I was trying to get back out of here. I have absolutely no idea where I went. I got very, very lost uh, in all of that. Uh, I, off, you go off the beaten path, if you like. There are still a fair few... I say roads, there are paths, there are sort of dirt tracks that aren't actually on the main map. Now, I only found a couple of these along, along the way, but there is certainly potential for plenty of exploration around the places, and yeah, pl plenty of fun little 
hilarious to find fun little bits to to go and explore and then we're back on one of the main roads and it's kind of yeah sort of heading back in so yeah as, as far as but actually there's an interesting i should have drove dove off down that there's an interesting little road going towards what looks like a massive dam there's like a dam there looks like a bit of a castle going on there's a lot to explore there's a lot to see uh, there are some some subtle little tweaks i'm sure there will be more that, uh, that will be discovered over time the off-road trucks and we're handling more like off-road trucks being able to do mad things with them is something that i very much look forward to that was a poor bit of driving by me uh, yeah, being able to have the trucks, the, the, the truck sort of tipping up, I don't quite know what went on the Land Rover. Poor bit of driving from me and from the AI there. I think he was trying to turn it out. It's a new junction of death. Uh, yeah, there are some nice little details. I like seeing the new tyre compounds. There are some new and interesting engine swaps, and I'm curious to see how mad some of those are going to be able to be gotten. That, though, is going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, a goodbye.